Case 30, Delta Airlines versus Bernard. We find ourselves here in Alabama at the Court of Civil Appeals. Facts. On August 21st, 1997, Dr. Henry Bernard II sued Delta Airlines in the District Court of Mobile County, alleging a breach of contract, conversion, theft, negligent supervision, and reckless supervision and or training. Dr. Bernard sought both compensatory and punitive damages. His claim arose out of the loss of his golf clubs while he was traveling by air from Brunswick, Georgia to Mobile, Alabama. On December 24, 1997, Delta moved for a summary judgment limiting its potential liability to a maximum of $1,250, pursuant to conditions it alleged had been made a part of its contract of carriage. Dr. Bernard, on February 4, 1998, amended his complaint to add Atlantic Southeast Airlines as a defendant. On February 17, the court granted Delta's motion for summary judgment, limiting its liability to $1,250. On July 2, 1998, the court entered a judgment in favor of Dr. Bernard for the $1,250. Dr. Bernard appealed to the Circuit Court of Mobile County on July 8, 1998 for a trial de novo. The case was tried before a jury on March 2, 1999. At trial, Dr. Bernard voluntarily dismissed ASA as a defendant. Delta moved for a judgment as a matter of law, JML, at the close of Dr. Bernard's case, the court entered a JML in favor of Delta on all the claims except the claims alleging a breach of contract and conversion. Delta renewed its motion for a JML as to those claims at the close of all evidence. The court denied the motion and submitted the case to the jury. The jury returned a general verdict in favor of Dr. Bernard for $30,000. The court, in accordance with Rule 13, Reduce the verdict to $10,000, which represents the jurisdictional limits of the district court. Delta appealed to this court after the circuit court denied its post-judgment motion. So what's the issue? Whether Dr. Bernard's conversion claim in this case relates to an airline service and therefore must be determined in accordance with federal law. The judgment of the trial court is reversed, and on remand, the court is directed to enter a judgment in favor of Dr. Bernard of $1,250. Let's look at the reasoning to see why. Delta conceded at trial that a contract of carriage existed between the parties and that it had breached that contract. However, it argued that its liability was limited to $1,250 because it contended it had satisfied the notice requirements contained in 14 CFR 253 and 254. Note that the limitation of liability is now $3,500 as of the latest amendment to the rule in 2015. The plaintiff flew on Atlantic Southeast Airlines. It was part of the Delta Connection carrier. Note that the actual carrier may be different than the name printed on an airplane or even printed on a ticket. We must all be diligent in finding out exactly who is responsible for the flight in order to name the right defendant and pursue the party that is potentially liable. So what exactly is this contract of carriage? It's a contract between a carrier of goods or passengers and the consignor, consignee or passenger. Contracts of carriage typically define the rights, duties and, limit and liabilities of parties to the contract, addressing topics such as acts of God and including clauses such as force majeure. Here's something to grab your attention. In July 2010, it became widely public that Southwest Airlines had classified mechanical difficulties as an act of God in their contract of carriage, expanding the definition formerly shared with Delta American United and Continental. And now what exactly is CFR is 14 CFR 254.5 and 253.4? Section 254.5 provides that airlines flying large aircraft must provide conspicuous written notice that federal rules limit liability to 3,500 per passenger. In any flight segment using large aircraft or on any flight segment that is included on the same ticket as another flight segment that uses large aircraft, an air carrier shall provide to passengers by conspicuous written material included on or within its ticket either 
notice of any monetary limitation on its baggage liability to passengers, or the following notice. Federal rules limit require any limits on an airline's baggage liability to be at least 3500 per passenger. Section 253.4 governs the contract of carriage, including the requirement that an airline make such documents available to its passengers. A ticket or other written instrument that embodies the contract of carriage may incorporate contract terms by reference, that is, without stating their full text, and if it does so, shall contain or be accompanied by notice to the passenger as required by this part. In addition to other remedies at law, an air carrier may not claim the benefit as against the passenger of, and the passenger shall not be bound by, any contract term incorporated by reference if notice of the term has not been provided to that passenger in accordance with this part. Each air carrier shall make the full text of each term that it incorporates by reference in a contract of carriage available for public inspection at each of its airport and city ticket offices. Each air carrier shall provide free of charge by mail or other delivery service to passengers, upon their request, a copy of the full text of its terms incorporated by reference in the contract. Each carrier shall always keep available free of charge at all locations where its tickets are sold within the United States, information sufficient to enable passengers to order the full text of such terms.